So uh, uh, last time, uh, I think it's in January, uh, we started the 400 verses. We only finished the one stanza. So today we will continue uh, from the remaining uh, stanzas of this text. Uh, now, uh, before we start uh, into the uh, uh, the text, uh, first of all, uh, since this is a Mahayana teaching, therefore, it is extremely important for us to adjust our motivation for listening to this teaching by thinking that, by the way, uh, I'm going to listen to this teaching in order to benefit all dear mother sentient beings, and in order to benefit them, may achieve may I achieve the supreme state of complete enlightenment to benefit all dear mothers and human beings. Uh, in this manner, we all should adjust our motivation uh, in the most uh, altruistic manner. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, Ramachi also uh, would like to, uh, aside from the first uh, 400 stanzas, so actually uh, yesterday uh, we talked about uh, uh, how to practice uh, uh, as a tantra practitioner. So, uh, uh, I forgot one uh, uh, important thing, so I'd like to uh, share today. Uh, before we begin uh, the practice, so it's important to bless the uh, hand implements such as like uh, uh, mala and so forth. Oh, oh. Uh, blessing the uh, blessing the sp uh, one's own speech and the mala. Mm. Now in general speaking, so once the mala is blessed, so therefore uh, one shouldn't step over a mala. Sometimes we just place on your table or so then we just uh, walk over the mala and one should not uh, do do those things and also should not suppose not uh, take it with you to a restroom also this uh prohibited uh, sometimes we get just like uh we are for, uh, forgetful about thing due to urgency we just rush out rush into the restroom but just be mindful like uh once you bless the mala try to keep it uh, uh in a clean place mm. So this is a part of the uh, uh, the part of like a yesterday segment, okay? Yes. the Oma the Dengi the Lobe Aya Dewa Che. Any corner the Dewa 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 Mangu Yores, but then Dewa Dewa Yores any the Pugi and the Kevin Nani and the Digi Jetsab Chigi Yores. Then I'm sure the Do Shisha Dewa 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 uh, okay. So, okay, now let's back to the 400 verses that the text that we're going to do, the title of the text is the, the 400 verses, 
by Arya Master Arya Deva. And this text, root text, uh, there are so many uh, commentaries to this uh, root text, uh, such as by Master uh, Chantirkirti and uh, uh, the Geza, uh, the Geza Rinpoche and so forth. And today, uh, the, um, the my explanation in accordance with the uh, Geza Rinpoche's uh, commentary to this root text. Mm -hmm. Thank so I will skip like a traditional way of uh, explaining the text such as in traditional way then uh, uh, so explain with the uh, Sanskrit title of the text and translation version of the translation of the text and so on and so forth. So I will uh, skip all the formalities uh, and rather just go straight into the text, okay? Mm. Yes. So now, like, um, how does this root text uh, paves the path towards the enlightenment? Then it rabje tangbo shigi, and it ngadu saje ji pumbonga di, and it chinjulo him, but then call and it yijung jitugi, and then but the jeba tengi or yes, rabje tangbo shigi. Rabje tangbo shigi, pumbo, can this one be? Saje ji pumbonga, tabala soba zimbe, and it lo chinjulo di him, but then eh? Uh, so this text, uh, the root text, the uh, first four chapter, um, uh, it focus on how uh, uh, contaminated five aggregates uh, cause to be uh, the cause. Five, five contaminated aggregate as a cause that we that we exist in cyclic existence and how one can cultivate renunciations to be liberated from the cyclic existence mm -hmm. so so those two are the important topics uh within the first four chapters <laughs> So uh so if we illustrate on this uh point this so uh for uh, for example if we look at the first chapter the first chapter highlights on the uh um how this five aggregate actually as a uh uh they, they study on this five aggregate and after all this five aggregate are uh composition of many paths right so therefore uh therefore it's impermanent once it's a compounded, it's naturally it's a decompound, uh, and therefore, like uh, in terms of the five uh, four seals, the first uh, out of the four seal, uh, first one is the impermanence. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the first chapter really are uh, uh, stress on the understanding of how everything transitory in nature. Mm -hmm. Impermanent, no. No. That's Yes. Uh, so uh... 
Okay, so uh, uh, the earlier when I say four seals, right? So you have to understand this one. When I say four seals, I'm referring to the uh, out of four noble truth. First noble truth is truth of suffering, right? Four noble truth. First one is truth of suffering. And the truth of suffering has four attributes. Okay, so out of the four attributes, First one is impermanence. And this impermanence, what we are talking here in the first chapter, because with not knowing how things are with knowing how things are impermanent, therefore we see impermanent as a permanent. Seeing five aggregates are permanent, it calls us to be still remains in the second existence. Therefore, first chapter address on the Five aggregates, after all, it's not a perm permanent, rather it's impermanent. So therefore, in the second chapter, it it talks about since it's impermanent, therefore, anything that is like a uh, contaminated aggreg uh, aggregation, it's not a... Uh, uh, not a... a hap happiness, rather it causes a, a suffering. And which is the uh, out of the four attribute? First one is impermanent. Second one is a uh, a suffering. That object soon be again. It's like you put the dunga by in tongue and tell you a tongue or the room. Gumari is and the tongue will change a lot on to think. Jabba think of it. So uh, now, third chapter it stressed that since since everything that is con contaminated, which brings a, a suffering. Therefore, it lacks the purity. It's not a clean, uh, which is the third attributes of the four noble first, first four noble two, which the yeah third chapter uh, stress on this topic. Then Rabje Shibe gita mitang wadi thorja imba insang mitang shi thora chawa insang an telia an dad dagir jungu mari islan ani dangzingi ani shiyuka ani ani tangme batengi yores Rabje Shibe. That's it. So since third chapter it stress on the, it since it lacks the purity therefore it's impure and since it's impure it lacks the inherent existence therefore one should not grasp things as a uh, as a inherently and and this uh, 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 so the uh, fourth attribute is a uh, uh, selflessness. And the fourth chapter uh, uh, talks about this topic, uh, uh, selflessness, which is the fourth attribute of the first uh, noble truth. Uh, so now if you look at the more closely to those uh, four, uh, four chapters of this root text, then it really a uh, stress on the importance, the essence of the middle scopes of the practitioner according to the Lamrim uh, teaching middle scope. So, which is uh, understanding the how samsara as a suffering in nature and cultivating a wish to be liberated from uh, uh, a samsara, which is the essence of the middle scopes of practitioner and using that as a foundation to lay out for the uh, uh, greater scopes of the practitioner, which means advanced uh, 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 practitioner, where the practitioner aims to achieve complete enlightenment for the sake of all dear mother sentient beings. Now, therefore, uh, when we look at the uh, uh, first noble truth, which is the truth of suffering, it, 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 which it has the four attributes, right? Uh, and those four attributes are uh, impermanence, uh, 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 suffering, 
uh, impurity and no self. And, and, and those four directly corresponds cross cross to the uh, first four chapter and first four chapter addressed to those four attributes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Understand? Yes, no. <laughs> now, uh, depending on the uh, mental capacity of a practitioners, for example, for the uh, mental capacity of practitioner of a middle scope, if a practitioner's mental, uh, mental cap capacity that corresponds to the middle scope of practitioner for those, then uh, uh, the text uh, uh, redirects to the understanding of renunciations where one sees the suffering uh, samsara as a suffering nature and through the cultivation of uh, renunciation, one leads to the liberations, right? That's the for the middle scopes of practitioner. And whereas the uh, practitioner of uh, 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 mental capacity, that that of uh, uh, advance. Here, advance refers to the Mahayana uh, practitioner uh, whose scope is advanced or great in terms of uh, holding all mother mother sentient being into one's practice. We emphasize to to uh, liberate all mother sentient being from their suffering and one aspiring to achieve buddhahood for mother sentient being's sake. So such a uh, practitioner, we call it uh, advanced uh, scope of practitioners. Mm. So those uh, are the, like, uh, the, uh, the uh, core essence of the first four chapter of this root text. Now, the fifth chapter uh, of this root text uh, uh, stress on the, the conduct of a bodhisattvas uh, because in order to achieve Buddhahood, a practitioner must have a bodhicitta. And to have, when one have a bodhicitta that becomes a bodhisattva, and as a bodhisattva, what kind of conduct, what kind of activities bodhisattva must undertake? Uh, therefore, in the first fifth chapter, it talks about oh, uh, the conduct of the bodhisattva. Mm -hmm. So in the uh, sixth chapter, uh, uh, it talks about the defilement or the delusions or the destructive emotions or afflictive emotions because the moment we are we are enslaved by the afflictive emotions or the destructive emotions, then then uh, oneself uh, is under the control. Since the mom the moment we are enslaved by these destructive emotions, afflictive emotions, we are bound to experience the sufferings. And and to such persons. Needless to mention, that person is unable to benefit, to remove the suffering of others, other people, because the person uh, himself or herself is caught up in the, uh, in the suffering, right? Uh, which is like a, uh, created from one's within. So therefore, in order to 
uh, terminate uh, or cleanse or remove the suffering, uh, we must remove from the cause, which is the defilement. And this chapter six talks about the nature of all the uh, afflicted emotions. Mm -hmm. No, so it really talks about the, how the defilement arises from one's within. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of uh, 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 defilements or afflicted emotions, so uh, uh, since when the afflicted emotions arises or when afflicted emotions arises, usually in relations to the uh, external uh, conditions, uh, external conditions, external condition triggers our uh, afflicted emotions to arise within ourselves. And therefore, chapter seven, uh, it, deal, it talks about the, uh, the external conditions we, which usually triggers uh, afflicted emotions. Then, Rabje Jebegi, any Karasogore, Sola to be Yugi Niludi. Rangi Matobatang and a Rangi Jula to me, Gigi, Lo Yona and Nimuchigi or S. They in that the Shene, any Nimupong Devatang, any Karsogore, Nilu, any Oba Devayena, Nilu Toba in by Karsogore, Nimupang Watang, any Nilu Tobayena, any Karsogore, Nimuche, Gagi, Gagi, Gagu, your STG, Kanta Nilulia. So so chapter 8 it really talks about uh, uh since chapter 7 talks about the uh, how external conditions create as uh, to trigger uh, uh, afflicted emotions. So therefore, chapter eight uh, talks about uh, understanding the true nature of external conditions that cause as triggering uh, afflicted emotions or the destructive emotions. Therefore, chapter eight really talks about uh, really uh, going insight into the external ob uh, objects right uh, 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 and uh, both subject and objects understanding and how things are uh, truly devoid of its inherent existence and by understanding in its ultimate nature then then the moment one understands the ultimate nature of external existence it sees to it it sees to that effect of triggering okay that the the rabje thangbo jegi thanda dor duni shena kunzo dembala tembelam rim ti tengi hore salam jirim ba so uh, in a nutshell uh, uh, that uh, the uh, in this root text uh, chapter 1 to 8 uh, it really a stress on the uh, 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 stress on the uh, conventional mm -hmm. uh, stress on the conventional truth of path that leads okay so earlier in the chapter uh, eight I, I forgot to mention like a uh, afflicted emotion arise uh, through conceptual uh, conceptual thoughts and one can seize the conceptual thought by seizing uh, by understanding its uh, ultimate nature okay <laughs> Like then the chapter uh, eight to the sixteen, uh, nine to the sixteen, uh, it talks about the uh, ultimate truth, uh, uh, ultimate truth. Now, Rabje Gubegi, Dujele, ani karsore, Dujay chyo kande jee na yah ani thele yah ani karsore. Mita be rangshi de la nita kanda thanda ani Dujay chyo nam ani. 
gagiores. Juja told the body, the subject could be gay, do jiggy churnum, and churnum la tower de meroa, tapa mari, metabore, and conduct tabig to the gagiores. So chapter nine, it talks about, uh, I mean, uh, so if, if uh, elaborate a little bit of those remaining chapters, chapter nine talks about all the uh, compositional factors are, uh, uh, are uh, all the composition factors are not a permanent entities, rather are impermanent. So mm -hmm. it negates the notion of permanence. <laughs> Tabining butchon yo maris lamna reta, and the tagbe ranch in ten yo mari lani, and it duji tapper tabe, tawa de kakiota. So it really like it, just as long as a phenomena are uh, compositional, uh, therefore, uh, they, uh, therefore it's impermanent, and because of, uh, because, uh, uh, because of this, it helps to seize the notion of permanence to any phenomena. Which is a compositional factor. Rabji Chube Ginang the Chi Dame Batingiris. La Chinang Dame Chinang Dame, let's say Chi Chi Chu, the Nangi Chu, and it dot the Rungumaris, Dame Bores, Lentingiris. Let's say. Um, uh, Rabji Kazishasti. Now, tenth, chapter ten, uh, uh, talks about, uh, uh, so chapter 10 talks about there's no uh, 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 so chapter 10 talks about uh, 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 so any uh, like a both uh, external phenomena or the internal phenomena uh, in essence any phenomena any phenomena that exists doesn't have its uh two intrinsic value. So uh, I understand everything. If you don't understand, just uh tell me. Okay, it's just I'm not sure whether it's just like it just you uh, you are understanding what I'm translating. Yeah, the, the ten chapter uh uh mostly uh, talking about uh, every existence is not. Existing by their self or by nature or something like that. <laughs> Is it? It's uh, little means it's talk about the uh, emptiness. <laughs> uh, the chapter ten. Any digi rabje chukji ba digi. Any thangi duje chyo kanga meda bari lanchik she time ba. Ta rabje chukji ba digi mise ki thu. Yang kar su kore takbar khelenge din de yoro wa. Two tapa killing it to Dama, the Jujibi, any two young, any tapa marel and tapa gagiuris. So, chapter uh, 11, it, it specifically uh, uh, talks about how concept of even the concept of time is not a permanent. Uh, the, uh, because in the earlier chapter, one of the earlier chapter, it talks about uh, as long as phenomena is a compositional factor, then, then this composition factor is a impermanence, right? We made this statement. But there are some other philosophical school which they, uh, which consider time, concept time is not a compositional factor, therefore it is a permanent. There is some way of thinking. So therefore this chapter 11 uh, talks that even this concept of time is uh, not a permanent, rather it's impermanent. So uh, chapter 12, it, it negates the notion of uh, extremities, two extremes, uh, extremes of nihilism and the eternalisms. Then Rabji Chuksumbagi, Ombonga, the terminal of Sobayan, and the time ever is, and Takanda, two tin and take up to the mouth in the Yungurda, two tuck by killing a any Tanzigitawa killing a any cartogordi, Ombonga, the terminal of Sobayan, and the Dado Dimbarel, and then the killing it to the mouth in the Yungurwa, things that didn't do 
Gagir, Tanda, Raji Chuksum, but they get among at the tongue of the so young, and it damn ever real and in Mixigi. You don't damn it, think you know, young, who then got down the way, on board the tongue of the so young, and then that to your marriage and it. Thank you, Horace. So, like uh, now, chapter 13 is also like it's uh, also, uh, also technical in terms of it also stressed the 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 five uh faculties of uh the five the five 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 senses and its faculties they are also like uh um uh, uh, so uh now this five of uh, Five five senses and five faculties of the senses are also a, a selflessness, because they are, they are also in in, in ancient India there are some philosophical schools where believe that atma do exist and uh, atma uh, as a basis of the, the five senses and is five faculties of the five senses as a basis for the, the atma to uh, to exist. And therefore, this here chapter thirteen, it also negates the notion of the no uh, atma self self uh, selfhood. Rather, it says there is no concept of selfhood. Uh, rather, it is a no self. Tene rabje chushi ba de gita chhe tamje ani tenje deva chonga yena ani chhe tamje rangshi je madhu ba yena ani thaba da tanje chamba yo mare lani thik mandu langi tende yungu yores tende gita. So like uh, uh, now like uh, it seems like uh, since everything that exists it's actually uh, lacks the inherent existence so therefore it it's, uh, uh, therefore in ancient India there are some schools believes that since everything doesn't have any uh, inherent value then it could be nothing exists at all nothing truly exists. So you know what I mean? If everything that exists has no inherent value, then, then are you saying everything that exists is not exists? There are some school that believes that when it says no inherent value equals to no to exist. Therefore, chapter four clarifies such notions, okay? Then you have to join a baguette, do you cheer about the jig, but the never some ranching you to be tongue bagum to any jabber thing you is. So, uh, chapter 15 it talks about uh, uh, um, uh, the jig children, the jig children, the jig, but never the zoo young, and a ranching you to be tongue bare, and take on to jabber thing you is. So, chapter 15 it talks about uh, how. Uh, compositional factors exist. Uh, 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 the nature of compositional uh, phenomena uh, uh, come into being, sustain sustains its existence, and cease to its existence. And all those three coming into being, birth, sustaining, and death, or cease into existence. All of those three are ultimately uh, devoid of its inherent existence. So mm. this talks on chapter fifteen. Okay, Rajiv, you do be in the next time. Go back down. Then the part of Galen chair. Then the chini. Galen chair. You must check your wrist. So uh, chapter sixteen, the final chapter, it talks about the purpose, the objective of why the author composed this text, and then some rebuttable question and answer. So now again, uh, if we uh, truly uh, summarize what we have discussed so far, that uh, in this root text has uh, how many chapters? Eight, 16 chapters. Okay. First, Eight chapters. It really talks about the impermanence 
how everything that exists is, is impermanence, right? It talks more detail on the nature of impermanence. And uh, in other words, first, first eight chapters talks about conventional truth, the nature of conventional truth, okay? And now the uh, remaining eight chapters, uh, it talks about uh, the, the more uh, in the wisdom aspects of the path, which is the ultimate uh, un understanding the emptiness nature of everything that exists, and which is the ultimate truth. Okay. Mm. Now, now let's uh, focus back to the first, uh, the uh, the first part, which is the conventional truth that leads to the path. Okay, and and this topic it can be further uh, divided into two subcategories. That's Okay, now uh, in this uh, conventional uh, path or conventional truth, so we we'll say like two uh, subcategories, uh, uh, sub uh, as a category or the two outlines. First outline is uh, 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 clarifying the four misconceptions. So which uh, which is the which is the four attributes, four attributes of the first, first noble truth, right? So here, clarifying the four misunderstanding because we see impermanence as a permanent, suffering as a happiness. So it, it helps us to clarify that misunderstanding, okay? Uh, so it talks about that four attributes. And then second outline here is like a uh, helps to, Cultivate the aspirational bodhicitta. Mm. Okay. So, like here, it uh, okay, um, uh, by uh, clarifying those four misunderstanding, right? And that calls to that calls to that caused to uh, aspirations to be liberated from the suffering of ocean of uh, suffering, which is like the existence of samsara. And by cultivating such a uh, renunciation, uh, then uh, that caused a basis to cultivate uh, uh, aspirational bodhicitta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is the first outline. Second outline is is uh, then um, uh, 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 taking uh, more, uh, taking engaging vow, right? Uh, taking engaging Buddha, uh, Buddha, Okay. So uh, let me clarify this one. So when I say uh, aspirational, so for the uh, uh, Bodhisattva, there uh, like a f aspirational is just an aspiration, right? May I achieve the, uh, it's just an aspiration. May I achieve the Buddhahood for the benefit of all dear mother sentient being. That's aspirational, right? And then we call that's aspiration. When one have, when one achieves such aspiration, then act by acting on its deeds, we call engaging. Okay, so there's some uh, advance. Well, uh, so the uh, the next uh, outline it talks about uh, the uh, uh, engaging deeds of the Bodhisattva. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like it's just first one is the aspirational like a teaching on the aspirational uh, uh bodhicitta and second one is the engaging in bodhicitta and how to train in this engaging uh, bodhicitta. Mm -hmm. 
So for the uh, aspirational bodhicitta, the topic, it has the four sub-outlines. And those four sub-outlines are corresponds to the four, uh, four misconceptions. So first one is uh, 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 training or understanding uh, understanding the nature of impermanence uh, and that that calls to cease the notion of uh, permanence. Mm. There is no. Now, second misconception is like a misconception of like a, a suffering as a happiness, right? For this one is meditating on uh meditating upon ourselves, how this contaminated aggregate act as a source of our problem. All our baggage comes with this basically this uh, this body that we have, right? And understanding the nature of this five aggregate uh as a source of a problem, and that leads to the conclusion that. Uh, uh, five aggregates are 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 not source of uh, happiness, rather are uh, suffering. Then it's simple. Correct, na. Koa mitan be rangshin do san be gone. Any koa the tango the ringu mare. La ne di tango the be lo di any ah pang chui tango di tap tong chui ge yores. And third one, it, it, it uh, uh, like a third one is uh, understanding the uh, samsara, uh, uh, understanding the samsara. Understanding the nature of samsara, which is impure, and and that leads to understanding uh, the how samsara lacks that purity. Then Shiva karting gets a saje jingo bo namla da 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 ke sungur nigu mare la ne ne dancing lo chinge lo chupong chuti ting kres. Ah, so therefore it talks about uh for uh the in the fourth one it talks about uh. Anything that is a compositional factors, uh, uh, since since this phenomena lacks its inherent existence, therefore one should not cultivate a sense of possessiveness. This this mind and this days or the moment we grasp on its value, uh, uh, it creates a problem. Therefore, understanding how it's devoid of its in uh, inherent existence. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so now if, uh, the, the first first stanza of the root text okay <laughs> first stanza of the root text it really talks about the the death because for a practitioner Dharma practitioner the most obstacle the first the most important obstacle is denying that i will not die today just like it just in back of mind we say no i'm not die today even though we know that one day we die but not today right just not acceptance of the death therefore it really as a dharma practitioner is important to meditate on impermanence every moment how things are momentarily in transitory in nature the more one more one employs one's energy into a death the nature of the impermanence 
the greater it produces the sensibility in our spiritual practice to to earn uh, to to earnest right to hone our effort into the Dhamma practice, and that really comes with the acceptance of the death. That's it. Korongi, sing dey dau chena, sing dey dau dau dey dau chena. Ngombo le ya ani ta ngombo sena chitang ke chue le ya ani dembar shembe lo di ge ani kamsung ke chwa chwa le ani madre walha de yores ani rani ani ta lenyu ge wang ge na kamsung tenare sao sa ding kamsung tiyo do su su me do ba su su me sum tenare sao sa ding sala sen sum tenare de ani kang do che yu na yang ani ชิดากิชวนดิจูบาเรสลาจิติงเกอเรสตันไดลาวจิกลาเนาะซึ so like if we like uh so uh, uh the uh, the first stanza so like uh if we look more uh more uh more depth into the first stanza it really like uh uh because uh because we so Ah, okay. So, 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 okay. Um, um. So the uh the uh, uh the text it it read as uh, the first stanza. Huh? Oh, we can share it on online. Yes, please, please. Yes, maybe that helpful. Huh? Okay, okay. Uh, so uh the text uh the first it read as if those whose lot is that himself, ruler of the three worlds, without a master. Right? Uh, this is the first two lines uh, of the stanza. So uh, here, three world refers to uh, desire world, formless world, and form world. Form world. So that's according to the Buddhist. That's the, those are three world. Uh, and so here it says, if those whose lord is dead himself, the ruler of three worlds, without a master. So it refers that the moment, like uh, 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 the younger uh, uh, I will try to make sure that okay. <laughs> the Lingyu Wangi comes on Koa Kangla Chechin. ขันตุเจนายังชิดากิชวนดิจุบะเตรังชิงกิเดสเตลชิดาจาเบกูกูกูมาเรสเนสเอนิรานิขันตะเลญูเกวังกิโควาละเจตัมเจบะเจบะ
we came to existence because of karma and defilement, right? Then, then, uh, so we are bound to be as a impermanence, transitory in nature, because we came into existence because of a karma and defilement. Therefore, it is a we are subject of impermanence. And that subject of impermanence, it's not you create or someone else, someone else created. It's not like that. It's by in itself, it uh, karma and defilements, and then it, it's created as a transitory in nature. Hakone, <laughs> Sanji <laughs> Uh, so uh, the third line, sleep soundly like two vanquishers. So it refers to a Buddha. Buddha eliminated, Buddha terminated the lot of the, the impermanence. So it's a metaphor. So, uh, so how could be more improper? Refers to now like a... a if one day we're going to die, that's for sure, right? And and that's for sure, right? And, but like uh, not practicing, not engaging in the practice, rather just like we kill the time and sleeping. And then just, isn't it improper in terms of, in the, through the landscape of the practitioner, that's improper. Mm -hmm. So essence of the first chapter is like a, now with the understanding that like a, we are transitory in nature. In other words, we are impermanence. It means we will die. Therefore, therefore the time that we have, we must take the essence from this precious human body and deal with leisure and fortune and use it wisely. Mm -hmm. So the next uh, stanza deals about the gross uh, impermanence. That pena ani chida ge rangshi hina yang ro. Ani shee le ya ma shee ge ani thap shee yore is se mare. Ma shee ge thap shee yore is la yadindi ki ani chuba tang na. So like a, then that just like in the second chapter, like the second stanza talks about like, a, okay, yes, that is certain that everybody knows. Maybe there is a way to, to create a method where we uh we, we create a method for uh how to say uh immortality uh, uh not to die right uh, so, what if this we it, what if someone creates that method where we don't have to die so, or like i just will create a, a method that we can live forever that should be any uh, 
so like now this like a we like a, this we are earlier question let's say it's asked by like a, someone else then like a, to just counter this then just living forever does it mean not dying so living forever is not like a just not the antidote for cease to exist so here living forever to live means the path towards the dying mm -hmm. i i'm i'm not sure it's a living forever i i'm not sure right so in our lives we may have uh, some disease or some uh things that uh, destruct our life right but they have a we have an opportunity to treat or something so that doesn't mean you don't you don't uh, need to worry about uh, uh, the uh, how to say dying or I don't know dying, yes because uh, whatever you uh, able to kind of sunbe kind of make up swaggy kind of what juicy what it make up swaggy top crong any show bed dog what chicky or maris crong chile lamla shuba the chicken is called carilana cool Sumba Dagarangi Ra, Togje Dagarangi, any Gawala Patigoris, Shiwala Patigi or Matoji, Kosh Chiwa the Teni Mavasugi or Maris. So it says that we would die, right? So, but what if we extend the life force? So, let's say we extend the life force, right? So, here extending life force, it, I mean, it's not the, uh, it's, it's not eliminating the death. Rather, life force extend. ตะกุกกุกดินาวะเปขะรชะกะละนะงาจุขอชิบะเตเตขอวะปะละสกิรวะขอวะดิทังปุเจบะตะกะรังอะนิชิเวลัมละชุบะติจิกปะเรสเป
and there's no way that we can just live forever just like just extending life force doesn't mean just we avoid the death rather we just like just, we're heading towards the, the ultimate destinations mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, so what I'm trying to really like underscore here is like uh uh I'm sure all of us know that is certain, right? But back of our mind, we never think that I'm gonna die today because I'm healthy. I'm just I mean I'm healthy. Uh, somehow we deny that I'm not going to die today because I'm healthy, I'm young, and just I have no, like, uh, just uh, no serious disease or health conditions. I'm not going to die. And that really, like, that that really uh, blocks, blocks, uh, blocks, that really blocks us to engage in the two Dharma teachings. Therefore, it's really important for us, like it's just like uh, cherishing the every moments that we have in a positive way that enhance and that that creates a condition for us to practice the Dharma teaching. And that comes through understanding the impermanence. The moment we understand the impermanence, it creates the urgency. <laughs> Mayo the uh, past masters that the two past masters that we often advise to their students that the main reason the main carpet the main villain that caused us not to not to be a uh, not to become a true dharma practitioner is that is because of, of like, a, I'm, not, I'm not gonna die today, right? And that is the main reasons. Because the moment one thinks I'm not gonna die today, it means in back of our mind, we, we hang on to a permanent something. Not only I'm not gonna die today, but we make a plan for five years or 10 years, right? Just like, it's just we gonna live, just we gonna live. and. And all those things act as obstacles for your Dharma teaching, the practice in your practice. Therefore, it is really important for us to really be mindful about the nature of our existence, which is the impermanent. Right? The moment we are mindful, awareness, cultivating the awareness of how things are truly transitory in nature. And that really kicks in our effort our determination into a true, sincere Dharma teaching, right? Urging, sense of urgency in ourselves to really put our, uh, put our back into our Dharma teachings. Uh, that is important. And all those, all those practice of building this practice of Dharma teaching collapse the moment we have this Grasping into the permanence that I'm not gonna die today. That that dog dog do na lang na yan dog tije di. Sum ba tagaran chiva doje mare dela idin chiju yo mare sungerta. So now again, so in the nutshell, uh, even though we are living, but that doesn't guarantee anything that we're not gonna die, right? Okay. Mm. 
So this really uh, talks about, let's say, for example, uh, some, uh, 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 someone who is uh, 15 years old. And that person, that, the, the, uh, he, think, he or she thinks that I'm 15 years old, I'm not old, I'm very young, and I have a full life ahead of me, right? That person, if that person thinks this way, then this is, uh, then this, uh, it, uh, yes, uh, so the person thinks that I'm 15 years old and since the life is a full life ahead of me, let's say we, we, we live 100 years old. So it means I have uh, 85 years more to live, right? And and in between, I see some signs of a death, then I will try to do some, any methods that will not die. Mm. But this thinking is not good. Mm. Now, uh, so here, uh, first two. First two stanza, uh, it at first two stanza, it nails down the certainty of the death, right? We will die for sure, right? That's I think everyone knows. Now, what we don't know, right? What we don't know is third stanza, time when we will die, time, right? So in third stanza, it really talks about the uncertainty of the death. So let's uh, we use the example that 15 years old that thinks that oh, okay let's say I'm going to live 100 years therefore I have 85 more years to live and that that thinking is wrong because we never know uh, when we will die because the time is uncertain even though that is certain but the time is uncertain mm -hmm. Now, if you look at this perspective, uh, conditions to survive and the con the adverse condition for a life life a life force. So, when we compare those two conditions, conditions that conducive for a life force to sustain, and conditions that are more adverse condition to a life force. So if we compare the adverse condition to a life force is far greater than the sustenance conditions. Tarinchigmaris, <laughs> So that really like a, uh, so uh, like a, um, we mentioned earlier, like it's just uh, 
since the date is certain, everybody knows date is certain. Since we don't, we don't know the time of a date, right? Therefore, we keep like pushing that I'm not gonna die today or next year or the following, right? Uh, so it is like a acting like let's say, uh, let's say, uh, uh, well, let's say there's a, a highway which is like a, there are there there are a lot of like a uh, well, how to say uh uh bandits in the freeway that's whoever crossed that freeway gonna gonna kill uh, let's say example we're giving example okay and 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 if let's say that's the reality uh now a person thinks that the person a uh, person think but that per a person knows the reality of that freeway if he cross he's gonna kill Still, he thinking that, oh, just as if nothing going to happen if I cross and sinking and just walking casually, like, a, so it's like, a, we are acting just like that person in the examples. So he just still crossed that freeway. And even though he knows that he's going to kill, but he's just pretending like not knowing, just sinking and just walking casually. ตาเดลลามะคอมาโจคาริสุงโกรดานะชิชิวะเมเมอินบาเดเลอะอะนี่สตัมโลมาโควายินตันชุดตันตันเนนิชิกิโอมาเรสลามซันลามซันตาด
so the death like it just like even though that is that everybody faced the death and just uh uh everybody faced the death uh uh however when it comes to the individual like when i comes that person i mean that person has still faced the death and it comes like a the pain oh, and the pressure of that facing that doesn't I'm so tired of this left so tired of the back and forth i'm so tired of being oh, at well, someone's well. beck and call like a like a uh, let's say like a low existence right that, that they are they are, they are innumerable low existence right and when one bonds in low existence then it doesn't mean like i will not face the problem with low existence so you irrespective of how many people in low existence when once migrated transmitted into lower existence one still has to deal with those problems so like just like aging and sickness all those are part all those are part of our existence and 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 there are some methods to overcome to those uh there are methods for those uh, events. Since they, there are some remedies for a sickness and there are some cosmetics for the aging, and there might be something on the uh, dead, and I, I don't need to worry about that. Then that's also not a healthy attitude. Mm -hmm. So like just uh, like uh, even though I mean they uh, they they might be some 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 applications on the medical uh, advancements to extend or some practice can extend, but but there's no like a just you cannot avoid at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, the temporary, there are some remedies, temporary remedy. Like you can just uh, uh, t um, through the uh, medical yeah, treatment, you might extend to some extent, right? You might increase to some extent, but it doesn't mean like it's just, it's, it's not like a forever. Mm. So therefore, one should cultivate the awareness of the uncertainty of the dead and think and cultivate about the impermanence. Yeah. So here it is, the stanza five says, right? Sickness can be cured and aging, <laughs> aging treated. Therefore, you do not uh, you do not fear them, yet there is no cure for the last ordeal. Huh? Thus, obviously, you fear it. So, uh, next stanza, like castle, uh, intended for slaughter, like, uh, like a cattle intended for slaughter, uh, slaughter, that is common to all. Moreover, when you see others die, why do you not fear the Lord of Death? Mm. Mm. So it's like a just like a uh, yes, like a, like a, I was just thinking the notion of like a, that is common to everyone, and then uh, why should I care? 
but such attitude is is, is also not a healthy uh one it's, it's helpful to cultivate on the impermanence kadi simje simje nga do shera na lo la simje ani pang thin ni sebe ka la simje shinda do ki sege yo thong du ani kar thong ge thong ge la ani jiba jig me ba na shin ki pe sha ki yo ris simje nga ma di sege yo simje chima di thong ge yo ris thong ni jig na jig yo ris tang nga ju ki so it's just like a so like a, a butcher uh, slaughters the cattle, right? So the one cattle the the the, the, the line was as the kills then following cattle just just they're in the line, but as if they don't care, but to still go through the line. It's and similar to this. Tindemad, the same day, same so, so like a, like a, just just like the cattle like a, for for us also like a, I mean in a in a community we do hear a news about someone uh someone pass away or close uh, some of your friends or friends pass away right we know someone even our close they pass away we hear a lot of news about someone passing away right but like a like a, as if this not gonna happen to me just like a, we just but uh, uh so like like uh, this attitude also not, not a healthy did it so no but the nature one show what wrong attack on in the wrong the way you meet in the show when they told me do tona yang and it sure did that did you see it so since the like the, yes like you hear a person are dying you yes you hear like their friends died right something like example uh but uh, since since the time of a death is uncertain therefore I, I mean there's no point of worrying because I don't know when to die so why should I worry about when I will die, since since it is uncertain, so there's no point of worrying. That attitude also are not uh, healthy. Mm. So like so um now like uh, so the, the moment one adopts this attitude, right? It's just like oh man, like I don't care about I mean or what's the point of caring about that? Because it's uncertain. I don't know when I'm gonna die. So what's the point of thinking about something that is uncertain? And then it says that this is a, a, a foolish way of thinking. For as a Dharma practitioner, as a Dharma practitioner, you know it's a certainty of death, and you know it's uncertain, uncertainty of a death, time of a death. Still, you just acting like you just don't care. It means as a Dhamma practitioner, that's not uh, healthy. Rather, just cultivate the practice. But then, since the Jama did, any chew chew all the jig thing, it me low me get the raise me low young get to get any mala chine. Chew in Baha ko na shegi o maris lana ani kado chew all mashi wache chew all maji wache ne kalo samshin do. Any uh, so then what about like a, just like a, then someone else might think that oh the person uh, a person who thinks about the dead is very a uh, chicken hearted 
uh, this uh, it's, it's not a uh, it's not a brave person. A brave person doesn't fear about that. They join, sign up for military, and just go for war and die just in the battlefield, right? I mean, some people might think in this manner. It's the text says so. So, so this way of thinking is also uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's not a good. The the courage to go there, na. Today, this is such attitude it's really uh, it really uh, it really uh, 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 caused by uh, egoistic really this uh, braveness ground on the ego just like it's how brave I am I don't just I don't know feel uh, just like uh, and all those it's it's not a wise thing. It's, it's those act, bravery act is not a wise act. Nigula Chabni, and it's so little on Chevalet, solely a Jebber Cheney, Nichonian Lichina, depend on Chevre, yes, and good. So, so as a, as a Dhamma practitioner, rather to sacrifice our precious life for the sake of name or some, 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 yeah, some instant ego, uh, uh, colorful. Painting, rather to 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 utilize this precious human body into a dhamma practice, it's much wiser. That the nature of a jama digi in a rangi jungle of a color da song which do any scenario rangi so song which do and dig balls of a chip. China degree is lang again somebody in a dear Gumaris, Cardassina, Digwa. Junola Soba, unless Judah Nola Soba, Song Echedo, Rangi So, and a Pejucina. A man around the So Song Echedo, and a Dibala Soba China, Chao Mirum Bala Soba China, Degree with the Edig Maris. So, like just, uh, uh, then they might be like just thinking, like, okay, uh, Uh, so like so so like uh, just uh so uh uh to sustain the i mean like uh, uh to sustain the life force we have to we have to work right or just to pay the bill we need to work <laughs> so, so then therefore if one really like uh, just uh, disregard the uh, uh, morality of nature of the work, as long as I earn the money or just then I can I, I will do anything. If if really a blind shuts the my eyes the ethical life, then just to just I mean at the end of the day just the doesn't uh, doesn't matter how much you make money. It's basically it boils down to survive, to sustain life force, right? But then to pay a such price to just to sustain is not worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, like a, just like a, uh, uh, such action like a, just disregarding the morality, ethical life, uh, disregarding ethical life is really a cause of a bigger problem, suffering to oneself, and one should abandon such uh, attitude. And rather, the follow the footsteps of the Arya beings who lives in the pure morality and the 
cultivating mindfulness to practice the dharma teachings mm. so up to here we finish the uh, impermanence the gross impermanence so we will stop here for uh, for the gross impermanence okay let's say so it's the following chapters we stanzas it talks about the subtle impermanence so any questions hey i'm sure a lot of questions <laughs> In general, many, uh, many, how to say, many people think when they uh, describe the impermanent uh, in a Buddhist text, and some people feel like, uh, you know, the, some people, they, because of the, uh, the cultural difference or something, some people, they uh, have a little bit, uh, how to say, hard to, uh, hard to understand, and then the culture difference, right? In 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 uh, example, like a Tibetan culture, says it, it's not uh, people are not cautious when they talk about that or something. This is kind of like a common conversation. They talk about oh, you, you you have to you have to think about the permanence or those things, something like that, and some people may uh, think like okay try to scare or something it is not really try the, about the scaring you or something it really means if you understand as, as i mentioned before if you understand if you truly believe the impermanence of your lives that's uh motivate you to do uh focus on the practice put put the, the how to say put the some uh Effort. Effort to um, uh, do the, uh, how to say, real practice, not just like a pretended practice. <laughs> yeah, if if you feel like, a, okay, um, example, like a, if you feel like a, it's, it's very, very, how to call it, like it's very, very, how to say, very if if i can say maybe it's kind of like a surprise right uh, every everybody knows we have to go everybody knows right but until dying moments we we do some something for this within these lives not for future lives everybody does like that <laughs> even even i i'm telling you but same i'm doing like that too so every Everything we do, we are not focused on the future lives. If someone really believes future lives or the, uh, how to say, uh, the uh, liberations and uh, enlightenment, then in within within our life, right? Within our lives, we have to we have to put a lot of effort to success. But we totally forget the future lives. We are not. Uh, we are not how to say putting any effort toward the future lives or liberation or enlightenment or something like that. If it, sometimes I'm thinking, you know, the oh now it's age becomes older and older, and they have showing many signs that I'm becoming an age ages ages right, like like losing hair, become a gray, sight sight problems. And then maybe pretty soon I have to take some prescriptions or something like that, but still not thinking about the, you know the future, not putting the effort or toward the future lives. If someone believes in the future lives or liberations or enlightenment, I think that we 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 must put some effort toward the future lives. So if that don't 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 do that. Tichimata, 
so uh, frankly speaking those who truly believes in liberation and enlightenment uh, for them it's really important to reflect on impermanence uh, impermanence uh, and truly put your effort into a dhamma practice take every moment of your life uh, into uh, like a take every moment of your life into a serious uh, Dharma practice that can lead you to achieve liberation and enlightenment for the sake of all dear mothers and sweet beings, right? Otherwise, like, I mean, just it's easy to say, but it's difficult to put into practice. And needless to say, those who doesn't believe in liberation and the enlightenment, then the, it doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> ตอนนี้ตอนนี้เนี่ยเสียชิมาเคเลยฮะบาดะทันจิเชมเบเคเลยเนี่ยจีนะเสดินังเงี้ยงาจุเลกะตะมาจิรันเจรวะเสดินัง
So that's the advantages of one of the advantages of being a Dhamma practitioner who seriously thinks about this and acting on that, not just thinking, just writing, rather acting on that. So there's a saying in Tibetan like it's a, the, 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 the least practitioner uh, uh, the, the, the practitioner who put the least effort uh, for <laughs> uh, uh, in their practice when the death comes uh, they will not fear because they understand Right. I mean, this is. Uh, I did. I mean, just I did my best. Just that's if what it takes. What it takes. So at least they have no fear. But because the, because they already prepare. Yeah. <laughs> at the, how the least practitioner, there are no fear for the dead because he already prepare. He or she already prepare. He exactly knows when the dying moment, what what it should do, meditate or whatever practice do, or, and the next life they're confident they will have a another. It's kind of like changing the body or something like that, and then middle uh, the practitioner, yeah, uh, the the like a several So they're scaring to men. This kind of. They will, uh, how to say, like a in ter, in means there's this Tibetan connotation of a shy, rather, it's maybe it's not like a fear, something like this, right? Maybe nervous or something, no nervous or something like that. And the, uh, the, the how to say, uh, top or the best practitioner, the, uh, the, how to say, Gashin the Toshin. Like, so the, 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 the advanced practitioners, right? Advanced practitioners, they, they will. Uh, embrace they accept joyfully yeah something like so that, so that means that we have to build that at least one of those uh, <laughs> those uh, how to say those uh, those uh, practitioner level anyway I will stop here okay <laughs> yeah yeah sure sure Hello. Okay. Um, so I'll try to phrase this. Um, so you spoke a lot about, um, obviously there's the aspirational, but then there's the practice of actually doing it. Mm -hmm. And my question is, how do you find the balance when you know that certain people or ways of being no longer align with the path that you're on? Mm -hmm but you don't want to leave those people behind because they may still want to have to spend time with you and you don't want to hurt them. Mm -hmm. So it's like this balance of, I don't want to hurt you, but I know that the things that we have done in the past is not, not the path that I'm on now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอตอต
that's a it's a hard practice but mentally ready for other conditions because sometimes when just like it's uh it's irrespective of of the deeds or the backgrounds right uh so we embrace unconditionally that's a very important thing and and that like before we act out that's act mentally prepare is first just, just, and that's accepting insight is the first engage but then like uh, you first engage comes with the mental preparation embracing the unconditional that's the first thing second when you implement that in the physical action that's even a more challenge and to some extent it one might feel it's a not a practical just unconditional action towards others they, there might be a cases that in in yourself you have this very positive thinking unconditional but your action may not be reciprocate same from the others. Mm -hmm. and, and such circumstances, circumstances it's important that mentally not abandoning that person because that's a, right. Rather like a, how I can compromise come into something that person can understand maybe come forward a little bit right and then you would open and do the car the color look so like I just I was told like uh like uh, for example I was told that like a uh, a sort of like a homeless person for example I was told uh, I was told not to give money to homeless people when they ask for it and I I said why like because then I was told that if you give money to them they will not they will use in a bad ways which harms them not 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 uh, not how to say it's not the general homeless like someone who has uh, how to say drugs problems or uh, the alcohol problems and some people saying like it you should not give money. support support for the, those uh, those people then when i saw them so i cannot do it i i'll, I'll just give give some okay whatever you do okay <laughs> for temporary so they they need the help right so if they someone use uh, alcohol the, uh, and some cases they are very hard times if they don't have a, some 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 uh, how to say drinks then maybe they have a, some issue with us because of that they already have a already have a how to say too much toxic on their body so they need this if they added some toxic they maybe feel a little bit better for temporarily so 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 it's it is not uh, how to say they have a no uh, how to say certain path okay when you face something like that you should do this or this so it's uh, in in deep in the mind you should think about those try to help some those people but some action may not able to do right away but you have to try to figure out you have to look all the corner that okay if i do this maybe help or this maybe help or something like that yeah that's that's my uh my, my opinion <laughs> yeah, yeah. thank you uh, yeah. so before we do um dedication I'd like to um have the opportunity to um make an offering to him for today for people to build a relationship and uh, build merit so we can do a kata offering um i'm really happy uh I'm sure making my job a little easier. So when uh, I see people in Darshan, they'd be less likely to say, oh, 
I was so busy, I didn't have time to practice, you know? So, <laughs> or I'm not having pleasurable, I'm having not having pleasurable meditation experiences. So I really appreciate Rimshe as a, a great friend to me and to the Dharma Center here in Dharma, coming for 20, more than 20 years, mm -hmm. really incredible. So having this direct teaching, we can only, as tantrikas, receive this kind of direct teaching, right? Otherwise, we'd just like to hear, oh, life is pleasant, but uh, Rimshi has the confidence on us to give very direct teaching about this high-level text. So thank you so much. So maybe put up um, dedication, um, or should I just, can we, do we have time? Yeah. Do the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase it more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chenresi, Tenzin Gatso, please remain until samsara ends. And the teachings of the Barn of Rush, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. I'm not display <laughs> the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Treasure. Great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Songkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losantrapa, I make request at your holy feet. Can pay Hong Po Jong Pei Young Gong Chen Ke Pei Su Jen Song Kapa Long Song Dra Pei Jang So Long Da Meg Mei Song Tell
Lusandrape Javasu Wada. Om Arayapatsaya Namah 